The autumn night is calm and crisp in the town of Williamsburg, when suddenly its stillness is interrupted by a distant shouting match. Peter York and Stephanie Jacobs are arguing again. God damn it, just tell me what's on your mind, Peter pleads with his girlfriend. Her response, it's not that simple, Pete, just listen, please. We have important things to talk about, but you need to calm down first. I can't, he cries. Fine, Steph fumes. She admits defeat once more. Pete's stoicism, an unmovable force when he gets like this. Fine. Pete storms out of the house, slamming the door behind him. He needs to cool off. He's trembling. Steph, alone and furious with Pete for another of his childish outbursts, has a lot to think about. Pete jumps on his motorcycle and tears off into the night. Some time passes. Pete cruises along the roads of this quiet part of the world. The country air soothes his nerves. His anxiety begins to simmer to a cool hum now that the confrontation with Steph has slid to the back of his mind. Backed by the calmness washing over him, Pete is filled with a sudden sense of adventure. He turns up a dusty mountain road. The road winds up into the rocky surrounds, its breadth growing narrow as the looming mountains reach taller. Without warning, the ground begins to tremble. Rocks above dislodge from their ancient positions, cascading down and around Pete. He loses control, his bike wobbling like a drunk. It spins out from under him and he is flung to the ground. Pete awakens, slowly, groggily. The rocks have fallen in behind him. Together with the high canyon walls, they block his return. His bike lies there, a twisted, useless wreck. Ahead is an open farm gate, and the road continues across a bridge. If he can find a telephone or help, his knee protests as he lurches onwards. He heads off, through the gate, across the bridge. A log cabin is up ahead. There are no lights on, and the area bears a grave stillness. Pete approaches the cabin and knocks on the front door. No answer. He knocks again, more forcefully. Still no response. He creeps open the door. The inside is dark and musty. His footprints leave impressions in the dust as he walks inside. Hello? Anyone? Pete is alone. His damaged knee gives in to its injuries and Pete collapses to the floor. His energy is sapped and he needs to rest. A dilapidated couch in the room looks like a luxury compared to sleeping outside, so he decides to lie down, just for a while. 